One of the main sections in reading 37 is calculating the fair value of a risky bond or a corporate bond. And for the, our first case in this video, we will assume a zero interest rate volatility. Then in the next video, we will assume that the interest rate volatility is positive and there will be a binomial interest rate tree that we'll use to value the risky bond. Now, first off, the fair value of a risky bond is equals to the fair value of a bond assuming that it is uh, risk-free. And then we will minus an adjustment for the credit risk, which we call a CVA. So CVA stands for credit valuation adjustment. And CVA is a representation of the credit risk of the bond in PV terms or in present value terms. And to get this CVA, what we will need to do is we will need to calculate the expected loss each year and then we'll need to discount them back to time zero using the risk fee rate for all the periods. And of course, to get the expected loss, this involves calculating the expected exposure of the bond each year. Then we multiply by the loss given default or loss severity, okay, which is uh, 1 minus the recovery rate. Then we multiply by the probability of default for that year. So of course the calculation will involve a lot of steps, okay, but I'll show you how to do it systematically. So first off, let's uh, look at this example where we are asked to calculate the fair value of a three-year corporate bond with an annual coupon rate of 5%. Assume the hazard rate for each date of for the bond is 2%, given a recovery rate of 40%. And the government bond yield is flat at 3.5%. So here we assume zero interest rate volatility. So in this case, uh, again, uh, we'll need to follow, uh, we'll follow this tabular format. So we'll calculate the exposure, the recovery amount, the loss given default, the probability of default, expected loss, and then the PV of the expected loss. And then once you sum up the PV of the expected loss, we'll get the CVA. And then from we will then subtract the CVA from the fair value of the risk-free bond. That will give us the fair value of this corporate bond. Now let's start. First off, let's calculate the exposure. Now, so in this case, uh, let's say in year one, okay, the there will still be two more years to go in the bond. So if I so in year one, so this is how your timeline looks like. Okay, so we have a zero, one, two, and three. So you're now in date one or year one. So there will be another five dollars to receive here, another hundred and five dollars. And of course, here uh, in year one, you will also receive a coupon of $5. Okay, so we'll need to find the PV of all these three cash flows. So let's start using your financial calculator. So in this case, uh, we'll set N equals to 2 since there's two years left. So I'll set 2 as N. All right, then uh, the PMT, the coupon is $5 and the uh, future value is uh, 100. Okay, and then we'll compute the PV. Then the risk fee rate or that we'll use to discount here is uh, 3.5. Then we compute the PV. So we get 102.8495. Uh, I'll change this to positive number. So then we add in the coupon of five here, which is this $5. So we'll get 107.8495. Okay, so that's uh, 107.8495. Now let's continue with the second one. So, in, uh, so now we move on to date two. So in year two, okay, now you're at year date two here. So there's another year to go until the expiry of the bond where you receive the $105. And in year two, you will also get $5 coupon here. So we need to find the PV of these two cash flows. So now let's change one to N since there's one more year left here. Okay, and then uh, the rest are the same. So we'll compute PV. So we get 101.4492. Three, uh, four, four, nine, two, seven. So we will change it to a positive number. Now add in the coupon of five dollars. So that's hundred and six point four four nine three. So that's uh, hundred and six point four four nine three. Right. Lastly, of course, in year three, you will just receive the hundred and five dollars. So there's no further calculation needed here. Okay. So we are done for the first step. 
Now what we'll do next is we'll proceed to calculate the recovery amount and the loss given default. Now to get the recovery amount, we will need to take the exposure for every year multiplied by the recovery rate. So in this case, the recovery amount in year one okay, will be 107.8495 multiplied by 40%. Okay, so this would give us uh, 43.1398. And in this case, if, you, if this is the amount that you can receive, then the remaining, the difference here will be the amount that you will lose given the default. So if you take 107.8495 minus 43.1398, okay, we'll get uh, 64.7097. Then we'll continue to do the same thing. We multiply by 40% uh, here. Okay, then we'll get uh, 42.5797 and then the, uh, the remaining amount is 63.8696 and then for year 3, multiply by 40%, so that gives us uh, 42 and uh, the difference between the exposure and the recovery amount will be 63. Now, of course, if you want a quick shortcut to get this, we just take the exposure 105 multiply by 1 minus 0.4 which is 60%, uh, okay, the loss severity. That's a quick shortcut as well. So once we're done with that, okay, now we'll proceed to calculate the probability of default. Now from my previous video, okay, I, I covered this uh, calculation, but I'll run through it again. So in the first year, okay, the hazard rate, which is the conditional probability of default is uh, 2%. Okay, that's, that's 2%. Now in the second year, to calculate the probability of default, that means in year one, there was no default, and in year two, there's a default. Okay, so in, a, in year one, there is a 98% probability of surviving. Okay, using the two using 100% minus 2%, so here there is no default. And in the second year, there will be a default, which is a probability of 2%. Okay, so that will give you about 0 0.0196. So we convert this to a percentage, so that's 1.96%. And for year 3, the probability of default will be surviving for the first 2 years, which is 98% times 98%, then you default in the 3rd year, that's 2%. Okay, so that will give you uh, zero, about 0 0.019208. So if you convert that to percentage, that's 1.9208%. Now, once we get this probability of default, we can now proceed to calculate the expected loss. So to get the expected loss, uh, we'll take the loss given default multiplied by the probability of default. Okay, so if I take 64.7097 multiplied by 2%, so that will give us uh, 1.2942. And 63.8696 times 1.96%, so our expected loss here is 1.2518 and for, uh, for the last date, the 63 times 1.9208% so that will give us 1.2101 Now, next step is to calculate the PV of this expected loss Now given the expected loss here, all we need to do is just use the risk free rate 3.5% and then we discount it okay, based on the dates to get the PV so for example, to get 1.942, to get the PV of this number, we will just take, uh, this is in year one. So we'll discount, so the PV of the expected loss for the date one, that will be a 1.2942. Then we discount that uh, using 3.5% to power of one. Okay, so that will give us about 1.2504. And then for the second, expected loss in year 2 which is uh, 1.2518 so I'll take this 1.2518 discount at 3.5% for 2 years so that will give us about uh, 1.1686 alright and then uh, for the third expected loss I'll take 1.2101 over 1.035 to the power of 3 Okay, so that will give you about 1.0914. Now, if you sum all this up, so that gives us a total of 3.504. Okay, so this is our CVA, the total PV of expected loss. So after this, we'll need to find out what's the PV of the bond if it's risk-free. 
So if the bond was risk-free, okay, uh, then we will have the cash flow of $5 every year. And then of course, uh, there's a par value in the first uh, in the last year. Then we'll discount all these using the risk-free rate of 3.5%. So using the calculator earlier, we'll set n equals to 3, okay, and then just double check that your IY is 3.5%. Your PMT is $5 and your future value is $100. Then we compute the PV, we get 104.2025. So the PV of the bond, if it's risk free, okay, is then equals to 104.2025. Now, then what the next thing that we'll do is we just minus off the CVA. Okay, so that would be minus 3.504. So that will give you the PV, okay, or the fair value of the risky bond or the corporate bond. Which is 100.6921. We will then compare the fair value of the corporate bond to the market price to see whether it's undervalued or overvalued. So of course, if the market price is, let's say, um, $95, then this bond would be considered undervalued. Okay, so by following this process, you should be able to easily calculate the fair value of the risky bond. Okay, uh, don't panic in the exam, just uh, follow the process and do a lot of practice to get used to it. So um, in the next video, we'll look at how we calculate the internal rate of return of uh, this bond.